What's up, everybody? My name is Darius. Welcome to the Different Church YouTube campus. A couple of things I need you to do before we jump into today's message. Subscribe and hit the notification button so you can stay up to date with all the sermons that we have coming up. A few more things. If you're on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Different Church Nashville, hit that follow button, hit that add friend button, follow us, stay up to date with everything that we got going on. Also, if you are a Different Church member and you call this great church home, Hit that generosity tab if you feel so led to, to give to our church, to give to the vision, to give to what we have going on, and to give to what God put on our hearts for this city of Nashville. And uh, last thing, wherever you're watching from, hope God speaks to you in a mighty way. Here we go. on the YouTube campus. I don't know how you got here. Um, maybe social media, maybe you got invited, an invite card. I don't know. I, I just pray that wherever you are, that God would capture you, whether you're in your car, your dorm room, you're at the gym, maybe you're on the treadmill. I said it last week. You're working on your hot girl summer, the bod. I pray that God would begin to do something wherever you are and everybody a part of the 615 location, behind the scenes, in the kids, whatever. Um, it's always love and I'm just so thankful for everybody here over the last like couple weeks has been crazy we've gotten so many emails and things like that about people that are in Nashville that are a part of the YouTube campus that want to move to the 615 campus and if that's you maybe you're like sitting here and you're like man I know I need to I need to get involved I need to serve I need to do an outreach whatever if that's you why don't you just slide in our DMs whether it's Instagram Facebook email whatever you do carry your pigeon however you want to why don't you send us something and we'll meet with you. We'll get connected. We'll tell you where we're at because uh, we really just, like I said, wherever you are, we want you to become, you're different. What God created you, those gifts, those talents, that weirdness, God gave it to you for a reason to reach somebody just like you. We're in a series called BTS or Behind the Scenes. So for every finished product, okay, every movie, that you watch, every song you hear, every music video, every business, every marriage, every good parenting, you know what there is to that? Like the movie, you see two, two hours, right? You see two hour movie. You know how long they spend making a two hour movie? Like two years. There's editing, there's shooting, there's filming, there's actors, there's trailers, there's makeup, there's dress. There's a lot of BTS behind the scenes, behind every good marriage. People don't just wake up successful. People don't just wake up happily in love. There's counseling, there's conversation, there's prayers, there's kisses, there's all of this. You see... Oh, they look really good on Instagram. There are countless hours. My wife and I's marriage is eight years old, and we've been happily married. We probably both say different answers. Year one was a struggle. But as we fought through all of these things, you're looking at eight years of BTS to see a finished party. You go, man, Tyler and Ryan got it like that. Well, we got eight years, and I'm hoping a year 80 it's even better than that. There's so much. But, and in the Bible, when it talks about becoming the man, the woman, the husband, the business owner, all this, there's a whole bunch behind the scenes that has to be accomplished to make it happen. Some of our favorite Bible stories, we talked about David and Goliath last week. David and Goliath, the story's only like half a chapter long. But there were like three or four chapters before that that prepared David for that. 
And here's what I've learned. The finished product looks a lot better than the behind the scenes. The movie looks a lot better than the rehearsals, the makeup, the trailers, the... You ever heard like a song that's finished and then heard the demo version like that was supposed to come out but wasn't as good? That was the behind... They were working on it. They were crafting it. And you can look this up, I promise. If you watch an action movie, I was watching this on YouTube. So say you see, like in a movie, there's an action character. Say it's like Wolverine or something. You're watching a Marvel movie. And he's running through the forest. And you hear leaves crunching and like breathing and all that. Did you know that's not him? Did you know there's somebody like in a studio crunching on leaves with every footstep to make it sound? I'm telling you, go look it up like sound effects for movies. It's behind the scenes. Someone's like crunching a bag every time the action character runs on a leaf. Behind the scenes. You don't see it, do you? You just hear how good it sounds. You just see how good it looks. And a lot of times we want the finished product, but we don't want to put in the work. Or the BTS. And so if I'm going to be the man of God God's called me to be, if you're going to be the woman or the man of God God's called you to be, what's the BTS? You know you're called for more. I'm not just going to wake up and it happen. Maybe there's stuff. BTS. Behind the scenes. So if you have a Bible, we turn to Daniel chapter 6. We're in the book of Daniel. And just like David and Goliath, this is one of those stories that if you grew up in church at all, Daniel in the lion's den. Who hasn't heard of Daniel in the lion's den? But did you know there's a BTS to Daniel? You know Daniel didn't just wake up and start petting lions one day? There was a behind the scenes to Daniel's success. And really, even before I get into the verse we're in, I kind of have to give you a little bit of context. So Daniel, and you probably heard of his three other friends, Radshag, Meshach, and Abednego, they got put in this kingdom. They weren't from there. They got placed there. Uh, they were outsiders, okay, in a, in a pretty hostile work environment as well. And so they get there, and it starts talking about this guy named Daniel. It says, Daniel, even being an outsider, he starts really succeeding at his work, like more than anyone else. And then when that happens, and I don't know if you've ever been at work anywhere or anything, you know when someone else, when, when one person gets a raise, what happens to everyone else? They get a little salty, don't they? I should have gotten that. She doesn't deserve that. Are you kidding me? So that's what happens to Daniel. Daniel's in this kingdom. The king sees him. He's like, man, Daniel, you're kind of, I, I want to put you over my whole kingdom. Favor. Favor. But just like it happens at our job, at our, at our workplace, guess who gets salty? These other guys. So these other guys, they kind of, they're like, okay, well, how can we get Daniel to be demoted? And they can't, listen to this, they can't find a fault in Daniel. He's too good. I wish people said that about me. I can't find a fault in Tyler. If anything, you'll find too many, and I will be demoted very quickly. They say, we can't find a fault in Daniel, but we know that he loves his God a little bit too much. I think we can catch them with that. And so here's what they do. You know how people, they're sneaky, they're conniving. They're always trying to get you. They walk up to the king. They say, oh, king, you're so awesome. And the king goes, I am, aren't I? Yeah, I am. They said, you're so awesome. What if we made a decree across the kingdom? Nobody can pray or worship anybody but you see where this is going they're trying to get Daniel snatched up so the king likes it he says bet let's write it down so they write it on the tablet and it's official and now these guys that are trying to get Daniel snatched up what do they have to do wait watch this dude's about to mess himself so now we come this is remember this is before the lions Let's go to Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. 
we're only in one verse. Look at the, the behind the scenes of how do I pet. And, and what's interesting is the lions that were really after him weren't the ones in the den. They were the ones he worked with. Those were the lions. 6 verse 10. One verse, we see what leads to my ability to my ability to be able to pet lions. Look at this, verse 10. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, remember, nobody can worship anyone but this king. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with his windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day just as he had always done giving thanks to his God. Look at this, verse 10, right at the beginning. But when Daniel learned that the law had been passed, when he heard about it, well, there are two words that, I, that, that are the key to this whole thing. He went home and knelt down as usual. As usual. What is my response to hardship? What's my response to trouble, to brokenness? What's my response? What's my two words? As usual. When, my, when me and my husband are arguing, what's my as usual? When money's tight, what's my as usual? When my business isn't going the way that, what's my as usual? What is it? You know what Daniel's was? Prayer. Prayer. That's it. No secret ingredient. No crazy three-step how to be a great leader. John Maxwell book. No, none of that. One thing. One as usual. Prayer. And if you want a break, listen, if you want a breakthrough in your life, prayer must be an as usual. Because prayer moves things. Prayer changes things. Prayer is your, it's your communication to the one that can do any and everything. Prayer. But how come prayer is my fourth thing I do? Money's tight? What's my first thought? Okay, I got to get a second job. Oh, my marriage is on the rocks. Let me just vent about it on Facebook. That's the first thing we do. Oh, I'm mad about something? Rather than pray about it, I post about it. No, 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 no. What is your as usual? Your as usual. Because it's not if life happens. It's not if trouble happens. It's not if the marriage is on the rocks. It's not if the finances get hard. It's not if the kids get in trouble at school. It's when all of that happens. What is your as usual? What do you do every single day? And for some reason in Tyler's life, I can't speak for you, in Tyler's life, prayer comes, if it comes, at the end, when everything's settled. I say, oh God, man, I needed you to show up. Rather than my first response. You know what it is? It's pride, isn't it? It's pride. Growing up, huh. so I lived with my grandparents for a while. Growing up, there's a really popular show called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And there were three things. So you, you were a contestant and you had to answer all these questions and you had three things that were called lifelines. The first one, you could ask the audience. Maybe they can help you. The second one, you've got a 50-50. you got three of these. And then the last one, what could you do? Phone a friend. You could call somebody that knew about this topic more than you, that was more versed in it, that was smarter, that was better at it. It was your saying, help, I need help. I don't know the answer to this. 
Your prayer life is your phone, your friend. I don't have the answers. God, I need your help. But we don't, do we? I can do it. I got this. I can handle it. I know the answer to it. I'll read a book about it. I'll watch a YouTube video about it. Kids sick, the first place I go is WebMD and then figure out that they're about to die. Then I call a hospital, a minute clinic. Then I tell all my family. I call my grandma, see if she's got any like homemade remedies. And then after everything's done, then I go, oh God, will you have your hand on my daughter and heal her? It's like the sixth thing I do. Why? I got this. I've got it covered. You can't allow your pride to creep into your prayer life. You just can't. You don't have the answers. Tyler does not. If you need me to tell you right now, if you think I've got, the, I don't. If you send me a message, you need help with something, I don't have the answers. You know who does? Phone a friend. Call someone. God, he created your body that way. He made finances the way he did. He made your family the way he did. Your marriage. All of that. He knows. I don't. But we say I got it a lot, don't we? I do. Like I said, man, I can't speak for you guys. You guys are probably really spiritual. I'm just over here. I, I struggle. But Daniel's first, because I would imagine Daniel doesn't know what to do. He knows he's about to be killed. But his prayer life was, God, help. Help. I need you. What do I do? So he kneels down. Well, when Daniel heard that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual. Look at this. In his upstairs room, with its windows open towards Jerusalem. Look at this. Look how savage Daniel is. He knelt down as usual upstairs with his window open. Daniel wanted all the smoke. He didn't care if anybody saw. It's almost like he wanted to be caught. It's almost like he knew people were watching. And here's the danger and you're behind the scenes. Hear me. Here's the danger. Will want to take the easy way out. You know what would have been easy for Daniel? Keep the window closed. Have a private life. No. There will be, there has to, there will come a moment in your behind the scenes, in your BTS, where you will either feel fear God or man. That's it. You will have to make a choice. Do I fear God more or do I fear man more? That's scary. That's hard. Because if I fear man, I could, I could lose my job if I don't do what he says. Yeah, maybe God will let me slide this time. No, 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 no. Daniel left his window open. He wanted the smoke. He was ready. But there's something really tempting about taking the easy way out in, in your BTS. But not only, and I, I think this is what's so cool is, is I dive into just who Daniel was. He went home, knelt down as usual in the upstairs room with the windows open towards Jerusalem. At the time, this is before Jesus, the presence of God still lived in Jerusalem. His eyes... We're on the presence of God, not on the people. In your BTS, when you fear men, when there are things going on, you've got to constantly look towards where is the presence of God at? Where? Daniel didn't fear man. He went as usual in his prayer life and said, God, I need to seek your presence. tired, depressed, anxious, stressed, kids are crying, yelling, screaming. Where's the presence of God? When 
you have to be very intentional in your BTS, in your behind the scenes, that you don't just get caught up in life and you intentionally say, where's the present? He could have opened the window to wherever, any other window. He opened it towards the present. His eyes were on the presence of God. That's hard. He knelt down as usual in the upstairs room with its windows open towards Jerusalem. And now this tells you how often Daniel's as usual was. It says, he prayed three times a day, just as he always had done. Prayer is one of the scary things, and we did a series on it a few months back. Prayer is one of the scary things because a lot of people don't know, how do I pray? I don't know. I'm not really good at it. And here's what, if if you're new, if, if your prayer life's new, you feel like you're inadequate in praying, Here's what I'll tell you. Here's a hint that helps me. It's about consistency, not coverage. One prayer a week that lasts five hours is not as as effective as 10 minutes a day, every single day, seek consistency. It says he prayed three times a day as he had always done. Consistency. You're not looking. God's not impressed with how long you pray. He's not. I thought, I used, I really, uh, when I got into church, I really thought I had to be one of these crazy people that are sweating, that have this prayer cloth, that's just shouting, weeping in these. God's not impressed with that. He just wants me. Whenever the disciples, and, and whenever the disciples said, Jesus, teach us how to pray, you know what he taught? He taught how to pray humbly, not lengthy. Humbly. Father, my dad, you're in heaven, you're holy, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. Give me, I don't, I I can't resource myself, give me today my daily bread. Right? Humbly, not lengthy. So if you're like, man, I I can pray. You you ever been like praying, (laughs) you ever, (laughs) you ever been like praying for like, it seems like hours and you look at your clock and it's been like four minutes and you're like, oh my gosh, dude, I have run out of words to say. How has it only been four minutes? Don't be discouraged. Hey, don't be discouraged. Consistency. What, what good would it do if I went to the gym one day a week for four hours? Or I went to the gym every day in the week for 15 minutes which would give me better results I'd probably hurt myself after the four hours I'd probably I probably wouldn't go back the second week I was miserable 15 minutes 15 minutes 15 minutes I start seeing changes 20 minutes 20 minutes 20 25 minutes 25 right consistency breeds growth it just does don't be discouraged when you're prayer. You're like, man, I've been trying to pray and I've got like three minutes in me. And then I run out of things to say. And here's something I would tell you. If you find yourself running out of things to say, keep talking to them. I remember meeting a new person that I hadn't really talked to a long time. I said, hey, what's up? Did you watch the game? All right, see you later. Then the next time I talked to him, what happens? We started talking about a little bit more, then a little bit more, then a little bit more familiarity get familiar with God that will lengthen your amount you'll you'll talk to him longer the the longer you've known him the longer you'll talk to him it's just natural just like me and my wife the longer we've been together we can just talk about nothing for hours familiar I see so many people they get so just it's the same thing here they get so like this book is so big the words are so small there are no pictures one you can get a bible with pictures on it I've got one of those I read it too don't stress out you don't have to look cool I'll, I'll look lame with you I'm, I'm there if that's someone you understand read it I don't care God doesn't he just wants to be close to you but there's so much I can't read just read a verse a day a chapter a day consistency over coverage any day of the week my wife would rather talk to me every day a little bit than just one day we just look at each other and just talk all day long and then don't talk the rest of the week. She'd rather that. 
consistency. Don't be discouraged. Don't allow someone to make you feel weird when you're there over here shouting stuff down. It's cool. It's cool. Here, I'll tell you mine. I'll be very open with you. You know how worship songs are about eight to ten minutes long, probably? You know, the ones that have like the long chords. So I'll put one on, I'll read a couple chapters. That that worship song ends, okay? I'm done reading for right now. I'll put another song on and then I'll just pray for eight or ten minutes in the morning. Every morning. What's that? 16 to 20 minutes. And then throughout the day, I'll sporadically say, God, man, thank you. Something happens, or I need, you know, I just need to talk to him. I'm in the car by myself, another worship. That's it, Can sit, but I do it every morning. It's nothing crazy. Now there are seasons where there may be times, when you, but what did Daniel do? He prayed three times a day. It doesn't say he prayed three times a day for three hours. Just three times a day, just as he had always done. And then look at the end. Giving thanks to his God. In the midst of trouble, he said, thank you. In the midst of getting thrown in the lion's den, his response, thank you so much, God. Thank you. Daniel's different. As I'm looking at Daniel's life, as I'm looking at the BTS, the behind the scenes of Daniel's life, there's a lot more than just he woke up, he was a man of God, and he got thrown into the lion's den. There was a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer, and a lot of prayer, and a lot of prayer, and a lot of prayer. Prayer is your break. If you're wondering what is the secret to having whatever you're looking for, prayer. A relationship with your dad. That's it. And in the midst of your waiting, in your hardship, in your trouble, say thank you. Say thank you for the husband you're not really thankful for right now. Say thank you for the wife you're not really thankful for. The job that you don't really like, thank you. And I promise when you say enter his course with thanksgiving, see how your situation begins to change when you say thank you. When you say thank you. When you say thank you for the ramen noodles. I'm telling you, I've been there. I'm still there sometimes. I know. Say thank you, because he's doing something behind the scenes. So I don't know where you are, who you are. Prayer's a really hard topic. What's your as usual? In the room, online, what's your, as, what's your go-to? Where do you run? Your mother-in-law? Or do you really seek the Lord? Getting a second job, saving, whatever? Or, God, you'll provide every need I have. What's your as usual? Or maybe you're just one of those people that, man, prayer is just, I just don't get it. It's hard. I feel like I'm talking to a wall. I feel like, I, like I, I'm doing this and nothing else is happening. This past week, I was in the house. It was just me and Asher. Ryan was doing something. Salem was in school. I was in the house. Like I was on the computer or reading or something. And it was cold in the house, so I went and sat on my porch outside. So we have, you know, the two doors where it's like the screen door and then the normal door. I shut the screen door. Asher was watching TV, but I kept like the big door open, screen door, so I could still hear anything that happened. And I'm sitting out there, but I didn't tell Asher that I was going outside. So I hear her get out of the bed and go, Dad! I didn't say anything. I, I just kind of wanted to see what Asher was going to do, if she's going to be bad because I wasn't around. I don't know. Asher's crazy. And so she's like, Dad! And then again, Daddy! Dad! And she starts searching for me. And I'm just sitting outside. I kind of enjoy her because I'm always the one. Kids, Asher, Salem, where are you at? Come here. It's always me doing the searching. So I'm outside. I'm in my chair. And I just keep hearing, Dad! Daddy! Dad, Dad, and she would not stop until finally I was literally a wall away. I just said, Asher, I'm outside. She said, you didn't tell me you were outside. She never, she never stopped calling for me, though. I was there. I was present. 
I was protecting. I would have provided. I was doing everything. But she was willing to pursue me. And I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. And I think God does the pursuing 24-7. I think sometimes he just enjoys us saying, Dad, hey, Dad. And he'll answer. He'll answer, I promise. It's in his word. He hears you. I don't know if, if, if you're like me and you feel sometimes like your prayers are just going into like the, the ozone layer and they're just disappearing in a black hole. And you're just like, okay, well, hope that works out. He hears you. He hears you. He hears you. Don't stop. Dad! Just walk through this house because he's right there. He's in the house. He's ready to provide. He's there to protect. He's there. Sometimes I think he just likes to hear his kid's voice. He just likes to hear his kid's need for him. God, we love you. We're sorry when trouble, when heartbreak when finances when anything that goes wrong when that pulls us away from you and our as usual isn't seeking the face isn't facing towards the presence of God isn't really crying out dad I need you it's not even a lifeline and we tried to do it on our own God I'm sorry when I've tried to do it on my own when I've tried to preach on my own, when I've tried to be a husband on my own, when I've tried to be a parent on my own, when I've tried to manage my finances on my own. God, I'm sorry. Dude, I'm sorry. I need you. I just want my as usual. I just want every morning to pray like I'm about to run out of breath. That if, I can, if I'm not talking to you, I, I might as well not even live. God, I pray that my life would be like Daniel's. That if I'm going to be in a den full of lions, that I'm going to be so prayed up that I will have a peace in the den. Even when the people around me are coming after me or talking about me or trying to hurt me, whatever it is, God, I pray that I would just continue to pray. I would never stop. God, I know that my breakthrough is on the other side of my, as usual, of my prayer life of my talking to you, of using my lifeline. God, I pray whoever, wherever, if they've been denying you, if they've been just kind of avoiding a conversation with you, God, I pray that tonight, today, this morning, wherever they are, that they would just say, Dad, I don't know the answer to this. What is it? And they would find a freedom in handing it over to you. God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. It's in your name we pray, and everybody said, amen. Hey, what's up? My name's Tyler, and you are a part of our Different Church YouTube campus. And I just want to say thank you. I'm the pastor here. And here's a few things that you can do to stay apart. One, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be alerted anytime something drops or releases. We want you to be a part, we want you to be encouraged and inspired and figure out what your different is. But maybe you want to tell your auntie, your uncle, your cousin, whoever. Maybe you want to send that, just share it. Because what I've learned in ministry, people will open a link to a church long before they ever open the door to a church. And maybe you're on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, follow us, different church. Nashville, be a part, see what we're doing every single day. And maybe, last but not least, you're an OG, you're a real one, you really want to get plugged in. All you got to do is go to different.church, that's D-F-R-N-T dot church, to find out more about us, the church, uh, how to give, how to be a part, all of that. But I love you, and I will see you next video.